All right, so today we're gonna be talking about this render. I wasn't planning on doing a breakdown of this because a lot of the things I've taught in here have been different techniques that are put in other videos, but I figured it'd be good to just put them all in one video. And a lot of you requested me talking about this when I had posted it on Instagram and a lot of people loved it. So let's get into it. Now I'm not gonna show you step by step everything I did, but I will give you a good understanding and a gist of the theory and my lighting and my coloring. So for the colors, I've showed you, I believe I've shown this once or twice, but I use adobe.color.com and this is where I find all my color palettes. So I'd go in and type in a random one like, like advertisement. So I wanna find some good colors for advertising. I don't remember the specific color. I don't remember the specific color scheme I used, but say we'll just pick this one right here. It looks really nice. You would just click it. It would copy this hex code right here. And if you don't know how to use hex codes, say I wanna change the color of this blue here. Because I clicked on it and it copied the hex code right here, you would just go in right there where it says hex and you paste it in, boom, now you have a nice orange. So for the model, I'll link the, in the description the model I used. It's free on BlendSwap. So let's go ahead and talk about these little holes and how I colored them. So it's just a Boolean. So say I'll take this circle here, I'm gonna duplicate it, bring it up here and just place it right there. Now I'm gonna click on this guy and we just use a Boolean. So go to the Boolean modifier and this one is called Icosphere 004. So you would just go find it, 004 and then I'll just hit H and boom now I have this hole cut now I have this hole cut and then you just apply it so now if I were to hit tab you have all these vertices in here so all I would do is see they're selected because I used the boolean they're already selected go down here to my materials and I have this blue material I click assign and boom it is assigned to that boolean cutout and it's really, really easy, and it looks pretty cool. So I added sort of like a waffle, wiffle ball, sort of croc look to this design, and it's really nice. Now, I wanna talk about the lighting. Pretty much every time I light something that's not using an HDRI, I use area lights, because they're really good and soft, and it's directional lighting. If I were to use a point light, if I were to use a point light, it does light the scene, but the light goes everywhere, and it's not specific, and you don't have a lot of control over it. So my lighting setup is a is a three point lighting setup. So a really big one up here just to cast all the light down and then these two to give highlights. And I do have a tutorial specifically on lighting. If you go go, into the, go down the channel, I show you four, I believe four lighting setups that help with these kinds of renders, just being creative with that. And if I wanted to, I can go in and say, make it red, make it yellow, and I can have a lot of fun and control with this. And with this ball here, it's just another boolean it's just another boolean right here just made it smooth gave it smooth shading and instead of just keeping it all the way in here like the original boolean it's it looks fine but to have that gap gives it some nice margin and some space to breathe and it just ups the quality now for the placement of the circles i didn't just place them anywhere i wanted to give it sort of like a continuation of the comp composition so it keeps your eye here so it just sort of goes in a circle up here so the face is facing this direction with this ball and your eye leads down here all the way up here the face so it just keeps you in this circular motion for the composition and i find that really cool and fun it just makes it a better render so while i was designing this i didn't color at first I made sure that everything was placed a rule of thumb at least for these types of renders for example another render like this which is in sort of the same style before coloring and lighting make sure you have good placement and good composition because once you start coloring and lighting you get distracted and it becomes a crutch when it comes to actually making a good composition so make sure you do your placement first so that's the most important thing and then after that do lighting and then do your coloring Again, for the coloring, I just used a color palette so everything sort of molds together so you don't have to use, so you don't have to come up with your own color schemes. You can use ones that are already really good and things that you wouldn't normally use. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this color palette right here and just add it to the current scene just to show you how, how fun this is. Now, before I do it, keep in mind the brightest colors should be the point of focus. for So, it's for, the, so for example, this right here, this yellow, that's what I want the point of focus to be. So I'm going to make that that orange. So here you go. Here's the new color setup. I really wouldn't use this in the end. It's not my favorite. And when I had initially made 
And when I had initially made this design, I had gone through about three or four color palettes before I decided to land on this one. So don't just stick to one. Try out a bunch and be creative and place them around and also add different colors that all, you don't have to stick to every single color. You can add some, you can take some out. It's all up to you. And how I made all these materials look as soft as they are, I really just used the, the, the default principle the default principled settings. So I kept the roughness right here in the middle. I didn't make a metallic, just kept them the way they are. Everything, just keep it the way it is. It looks nice and soft. And if you want to explore more in this style, one of the biggest guys and one of my favorites, his name is Peter Tarka. He does a lot of that similar type of shading and his composition is really, really awesome. So I would go ahead and check him out on Instagram or Behance, whatever you like to use. And his, his designs and his renders are just really, really nice and fun to look at. So I would study his work, study his composition, and then you can go in and make your own and have a lot of fun. Now how I got all this swirly stuff, I'll just show you guys the node setup. It's just a Voronoi, and right behind the Voronoi is a Musgrave, and then plugging that into a bump node. If it's not in the bump node, then you won't see the lines. So this is just the color. If I were to take this right here, just plug it in like that, you would still see the same, all these swirls. Only thing is the color ramp just sort of takes the height of the mount. So now it's just flat. So it's just a Voronoi and a Musgrave makes those swirls. I believe I've talked about that several times, but it's one of my favorite node setups that I use and it's just really nice to look at. So there you go, that's how I made the render. It's a lot of just a composition and color study. Just having some fun and thanks for watching.